I kept my word, and I rewatched part of the last episode, the beginning part, to see if the web show had spied on us. And it did. Oh, it most certainly did. For those who watched it, you know what it showed. For those who didn't, I will tell you. It showed Meg's nightmare of me being a bloody asshole. And as much as I would love to say that it was just a nightmare, there was definitely truth behind it. After the reading of that oh-so-charming Spanish fly invasion, I was a bit testy. So, in the dream where I came down the stairs and confronted Meg, that was legit. That did actually happen. Me yelling at Meg, that legitly happened. Reality, though, instead of Meg defending herself or continuing to defend herself, she apologized to me. She shouldn't have, because she had nothing to apologize for, but she did apologize to me and said that she didn't mean to upset me and that she would be more mindful about the outfit that she wears while knowing in the future. Ironically, it was her saying all this that made me realize, hey, Sue, you're being a bloody ass. How about you back off? And I did. And then I apologized to her. And I said, you don't need to apologize. I'm the one being an ass. No, well, I'm sorry. And she asked me about the story, and then I went into a tirade about the story, and yada, 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 and that was pretty much how the rest of the evening went. So yes, if anything was an end, especially seeing the nightmare version of the events, is that even though I've made a lot of progress over the years, I still have very not-so-nice moments that I really need to work on. I need to keep my temper in, te in check and not take things out on Meg. I really got to stop doing that. So, I'm going to work on that. Oh, and you probably noticed. New gloves. They're very, very beautiful. Meg surprised me with these the other day. And, you know, I love them. They're very beautiful. But honestly, I don't feel like I deserve them after how I treated her the other day. So, yes, very grateful for them. But, I don't know. No, that's enough about me feeling sorry for myself. You're all here for today's story. Mm, yes, you're probably like, what an interesting title. Courage versus the Golden Girls versus the Lion King. Is it a showdown? And who's Courage? Courage, the cowardly dog. The Golden Girls and the Lion King. But it's not a versus story. It's a story that inserts Courage, the cowardly dog and the Golden Girls as Simba's siblings, although Carriage is still a dog, and all the Golden Girls have bizarre color schemes that make them look like Mary Sue's in a Lion King fan fiction. Oh, and they have magical powers. Oh my god, this bloody story, this bloody, bloody monstrum. <laughs> So, this review is going to be a tad different. I did read the first chapter, and the second chapter I just kind of skimmed through after a while. And if you're wondering why, if you are wondering why, take a look at this. Yes. Blob. Up text paragraphs. Every single paragraph is like that. Oh, and if you're curious, you know what? No, I will show you. I will show you. This is a pattern with this author. Take a look at their profile. Now, at first, you're probably thinking the profile looks pretty generic for an author. But then, look at this. And then, if you look and see what the scroll bar looks like, bloody fucking hell! Why? Oh my bloody gold!
So I'm just going to give you a very, very brief summary of this story. And then I'm going to read the final paragraph of the second chapter to you all out loud to show you how nonsensical it is. So pretty much the Golden Girls loved the Lion King so much that they somehow arranged it for them to be in the Lion King movie. And they all get reborn as Simba's siblings. But they all have bizarre color schemes. And they all can speak right off the bat. And they all remember being humans. They remember their lives before. Oh, and I believe her name is Sophia. She is still Dorothy's mom. Even though she's her sister. But she's her mom. And her sister. Her mom. Sister. Mom and sister. Sister and mom. Sister and mom. Mom and sister. Mom and sister. I know. Uh... <coughs> Sorry about that. I think my brain malfunctioned for a tad. So, um, yes. Yes. Courage. Even though he's also a sibling. He is still a dog. Lions gave birth to what I like to call rainbow babies because their color scheme is so ridiculous, like colors of the rainbow, and a dog. And the thing is, is that Sarabi and Mufasa are perfectly fine with this. They're like, oh, okay, our other sibling, our other cubs who are not acting at all like Simba, they can talk in their weird looking and, oh, we have a dog as a cub. Okay, perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Nothing wrong at all. Oh, no. Nothing wrong at all. This is not at all. Bizarrely, what the fuck is this? And then Scar's introduced. Scar's introduced. And Scar, like, it's obvious in the original Lion King that he's a bad guy. But this story is so ridiculous. It is so bloody ridiculous about it. Like, they make him so obnoxious. And it's like, really now? He didn't act like this in the source material. It's just so bloody stupid. And one of the big problems with this story, oh, did I tell you, did I tell you the word count of this story? Oh, no, I did it. 13,540 words. And it's only two chapters long. Two chapters long. And it's not even complete. But the thing is, it was written back in 2009 and last updated back in 2009. It's 2022. I don't think they're going to complete it. And if they do, and if they update it, guess what? I won't be looking at it because the story was... Uh, I Like, again, I did read the first chapter somehow. It, it was painful, but it was so hard to read because the paragraphs... I mean, again, I showed you, the paragraphs are just so bloody long and stupid. Ah, oh, and did I tell you about the author notes? How long the bloody author notes are? Here, let me show you one. Th that's the author's note for the first chapter. The second chapter has a very long author's note as well, but not as long. And, oh, there's another thing that happens in this. This story has a story within a story. And the story within the story practically gives away the plot of what is supposed to happen in the story. And when I got to that part, that part gave me a headache as well, because it goes from, you know, being blobs of text, which is hard to read as it is, and then the story within the story gets italicized. So now it's a blob of text that's italicized. Ah. <laughs> Like, the dialogue doesn't have spacing. Nothing has spacing. And there's typos. There are typos. Here, let me show you one. 
I remember Meg back in her heyday would have a fit if someone did this, having a word in parentheses. It's like, don't do that. And the big kicker, the big, big kicker at the end of the first chapter is that the author, ooh, the author, the author has the goal to say this. Well, this is chapter one. I hope you liked it so far. This story has to be one of the best I've written so far. If this is the best one you've written, I don't want to see what your worst one is. I really don't. So, the first chapter is practically, you know, about, you know, introducing them as being babies and whatnot, although they don't talk like babies. And then the second chapter, the second chapter. Now, again, I kind of skimmed through the second chapter, so I don't really know much about what happens, but I, when I get to the final paragraph, I will read that out loud to you. But, you know, the second chapter, it's just a bunch of filler. Like, it's talking about, you know, how they grew and stuff. And um, I want to show you all the longest sentence, the longest sentence that I've ever seen. So um, I did highlight it with the highlighter tool. I apologize if the highlighting is not perfect, but um, I just want to stress to you all that the highlighted bit is all one sentence. So uh, take a gander. And I'm sure there was other sentences like that throughout the story. It's just my eyes kept on glazing over that I didn't notice, but because this one was at the beginning of the second chapter, that's how I noticed it. So yes, so yes, um, I did mention before that um, the Golden Girls, the Golden Girl Cubs have magical powers, right? Well, the final, the final chapter, or the final paragraph, I should say, is what um, showcases that. So I'm going to read it out loud. It's a gigantic blob of bleh. So I'm going to read it out loud, and then I'll give you my final thoughts on the story. Dorothy immediately jumped to the ground when the buffaloes began racing and galloping through the plains in a furious swarm, and then the two of us reached the middle of the plains and we huddled together. I got on top of Dorothy and shielded her from any of the buffaloes that they were, they were wildebeest, not buffaloes, that could have kicked and beaten her, and we watched the fleeting swarm of buffaloes dart and rush in the disorderly pandemo pandemonium, and I knew we were trapped. It's okay, pussycat. This is what she calls her daughter. She calls her daughter Pussycat. I don't know if that's canon in the actual Golden Girls. You'll have to tell me. I whispered softly to my daughter. I, okay, so this is from Sophia's first person point of view, I believe. Yeah, Sophia. Yes, that's her name, Sophia. I won't let, let those buffaloes hurt you. But then one of the buffaloes charged right at us. And then before I knew, Dorothy activated a pink, transparent, glossy, kinetic bubble and barricaded it from and barricaded the both of us from that buffalo. The buffalo smashed right into the bubble and was instantly electrocuted and stunned into a, par a par paralyzing gaze. He then swooned to the ground and the rest of the herd lunged right at us. Fire away, pussycat, I commanded Dorothy challengingly. And then Dorothy shot and discharged streaks of pink lightning bolts from the kinetic bubble in a flare of fury and then several of the buffaloes were stunned and electrocuted, and the electricity spewed out of their bodies and were flattened to the ground. Then Dorothy disappeared in a, in a telekinetic tornado funnel as I sprang out of the telekinetic bubble and then hid under a boulder, and what I saw before my own eyes was astounding. Dorothy was levitating herself in mid-air through the telekinetic tornado, and she was sending out beams of telekinetic energy that were being discharged through the tornado. And then the telekinetic beams exploded and detonated right in front of the buffaloes, compelling them to disperse and scatter in terror. After some of the remaining buffaloes continued to lunge right after her, Dorothy then absorbed the potent kinetic energy in her and then ignited herself on fire! She then shot out flames from her eyes and then leaped right at the buffalo in a furious rage. Dorothy then bashed right into the buffalo and then manipulated the animal in midair using the electrical sparks that were in the form of flares. She then flung the buffalo up in the air with a zap of electricity and then shot out a huge explosive fireball that caused the buffalo to combust into flames. And that's how the chapter ends. I 
I've never watched the Golden Girls. So can someone please tell me, do they have magical powers like this in the Golden Girls? No, they don't. I didn't think so. I would love to know what drugs this author was on when they wrote this. And this is supposedly their best work. Ah, I am at a loss of words. Just the nonsensicalness. It sounded like something from Sailor Moon. And, ah. Oh, and I think I forgot to tell you, because even though I skimmed through the second chapter, um, I did notice something in there. It's implied um, that Dorothy likes Simba. You know... Her brother! Lions, fucking lions, fucking lions, fucking lions. They must like Game of Thrones because they like the incest of siblings having sex with each other. Why? And they're still supposed to be cubs. Ooh, I'm so glad that the story was not completed. And I really hope that they don't try to complete it. And like I said before, if they do, I am not revisiting this. <laughs> no, 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 no. Would I recommend the story? If you want to permanently damage your eyes? Yes. If you want to get high as a kite and then try to read the story, you might have fun. But it might give you scary hallucinations. So no, I don't even think I would recommend that. You know what? I don't think I would recommend this story at all. I just... I just know. No. No. Ah. <sighs> Golden Girls. Courage the Cowardly Dog. And Lion King. They do not mix. They do not mix. This is so bloody stupid. This is so... Uh, what were they... Oh, I just don't get it. I understand now. You know, I understand why Meg went nutty back when she first started her own series. I understand now. I think I get it now. I think I understand. Ah, could you imagine if she tried to do this? If she tried to read this back in her heyday? Now, she would probably be in a coma over how stupid this was. Ah. Uh, I had a headache just trying to read it. Ah. Uh, I kid you not. I'm getting a headache just talking about it. Yes, right. Um, if you liked today's episode, please be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, well, I will see you all next week. Until then... Cheerio.